It's your man's the whore flick digger ditch super six big Mitch and I'm kicking in doors with all three O's and I'm bringing 28 101s because we Vegas sons it's the metal lands yeah 530 oh, man and you already know what it is with it right Bolo Yang and yes indeed I'm on them things Bang! and these ain't my claims some say they ain't the things nah I'm just playing welcome to Vegas Chronicles with the horror flick big Mitch and uh, today, <clears throat> like any other day, man, I'm going to kick actual factuals, man. But today, I really want to put something to rest, man. And uh, uh, shout out to everybody that support my small platform, first and foremost, man. Uh, I'm going to be trying to uh, bring it up, man. Uh, I don't. I told you I don't do the fancy doo-wops, but I'm going to make it more professional, man. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't about, you know, the looks. It's about the message, right? All right. Today, man, uh, shout out to everybody that... Support me. Uh, shout out to everybody. DGFOS, man. I'm going to get with you. We go do some things, man. And uh, uh, bringing about uh, 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 some uh, positivity and some things we was talking about. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we go, we go, we go, we go, we go link up. But, uh, man, uh, let's get this straight uh, first and foremost. I'm going to just dive off into this, man. It's a certain cat, a certain uh, individual, you know, and I, you know, I don't know who he is. He's going to remain nameless to me because I don't know where he come from because he always covered his face. But to make to make, to make to make a long story short, he around here distorting history and, 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 and we finna put this to bed right now. Number one, um, with all due respect, you know, I, I never had no f issues with 28th Street. I never, uh, a lot of my friends that I grew up with, especially from like Elko, and, you know, in the penitentiary, and uh, you know, I got a lot of friends from 28, you know, and, um, you know, uh, but this individual, he walking around showing spray paint, he probably put up himself, you know what I'm saying, come to find out he not even from Vegas, and that's the problem. People that's not from Vegas always trying to just, you know, chronicleize Vegas history, you know, and, and, and they be distorting our, our history, Vegas history, and, 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 and trying to make it look like, you know, California history. You know, unfortunately, uh, my father, you know, and uh, he started all this, you know, and the oldest game in Vegas is Herbert Gerson, okay? That's the oldest gang in Vegas. It is, it, 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 and, 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 and 28th Street, y'all say started in the 70s, the, the, the helicopter got shot down in the Gerson in the 70s. You know, the, the Herbert Gerson was put up in 64, 65. You know, uh, my father them took over. Uh, uh, he come off 40 block, which is College Heights, which is right across the street from the Gerson. But it, at that time, it was all considered one, way before 28th Street. And there was no such thing as Gerson Park Kingsmen's, or none of that. They were called associates, all right? And it was the Byron Boys, which was the Turpin brothers, Vince and Greg Turpin. And you had Fat Cat and the Funkadelics. Them was the only entities in Vegas that you could consider organizations. And my daddy, he had a Blue Malibu. All right? They were more of a car club. All right? My mama is alive. She can tell you. All right? There are still Byron girls, Byron boys around. They will tell you. There was no such thing as 28th Street back then. And after my father left, okay, the Ace of Spades arose. The Ace of Spades uh, is older than 28th Street, bigger than 28th Street. Okay, 28th Street came out after the Ace of Spades, man. And then you had other gangs that was around with my father, that clicks, like you know, I never even knew this, but I met a, a OG. He was a Highland Majestic. Highland is what we call Martin Luther King right now. They were called Highland Majestics. And this is way before 28. You see, 28th Street came out after the Ace of Spades. See, what people get misconstrued is when they hear Gershon Park. See, Gershon Park come after the Ace of Spades. Okay? It was the Ace of Spades and then 28th Street. But before any of that, it was my father them. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. Before Gershon, all that, it was my father them. 
See? Now, after the Ace of Spades, 28th Street came out. Okay? And then, after 28th Street came out, the GQs came out. And the GQs became the biggest gang in Vegas. Because they occupied Northtown, they occupied Sydney Sioux, they occupied the West Side, they occupied uh, Bonanza Village, uh, there was baby GQs up over there. GQs became the biggest gang. So 28th Street was never the biggest gang, and it was never the oldest gang. That's a lie. It's the, the East Side, banging in Vegas, didn't start on the East Side, it started on the West Side. So no matter how y'all feel about it, and it's no disrespect to nobody, but no matter how you feel about it, stop trying to play something where it don't belong. Everybody know that banging in Vegas started on the west side. This is not California. People, uh, you know, you know, we know White Fence started in the 40s out there, and they're supposed to be like the oldest gang out there. Well, that's out there. Don't try to come out here and destroy our, destroy our history and make it seem like, you know, banging started on the east side and that, you know, the Hispanics, the one that started it. That's not true. That's not true at all. The Hispanics did not start that. The blacks did. That's why in Las Vegas, it's a known fact that the black gangs were always the stronger gangs in Vegas, the blacks had the stronger gangs because it was more black gangs than any gangs in Vegas. It was more black gangs than anything. And when Donna Street came out after the GQs died off, Donna Street became the second biggest gang after the Gerson. See, the Gerson became the biggest gang when the GQs died off. The Gersons became the biggest gang. Like it was when they was the Ace of Spades. Because the Gershons went through transformations. They went from being Ace of Spades to Gershon Park Killers to Gershon Park Kingsmen's. And then you had Wax, Max, Lokes, Dogs, Canines, Alley Shots, Love, Posses. You have all kind of, man, listen. 28th Street ain't never been deeper than the Gershon. Never. 28th Street ain't never been deeper than Donna Street. And I'm going to go so far as say, to say that even when Sherman Gardens and the Jets was at they, they, the height of their reign, the PBs, I would say 28th Street wasn't even deeper than the PBs. For real. I say it was more PBs than 28th Street. 28th, 28th Street is the oldest Hispanic gang. 28th Street is, is the biggest Hispanic gang. But it's not the biggest gang in Vegas. And it's not the oldest gang in Vegas. That's a lie. And then you got these cats that come from California and other places trying to chronicleize in our history and trying to put themselves at the forefront. You can't distort history. Not in front of me because my daddy started this. I have front row seats. There was no such thing as no 28th Street when my daddy then was doing their thing. There was no such thing as 28th Street when the Ace of Spades arose. No, there were, there were, mm -mm. no, not at all. Not at all. And you heard the GQs themselves even say, because they started off as a dance group. They, they became a gang because of the Ace of Spades. So I don't know what, you know, I don't get into, you know, Hispanic politics. That's not my forte, but I will say this and, and you don't have to ask me, you know, you, 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 I mean, anybody know this, the blacks in Las Vegas, there were more black gangs than anything. And the black gangs in Vegas were the stronger of the gangs in Vegas. Black gangs and Hispanic gangs never went to war out here. And that's a good thing. But the black gangs were more stronger. There were more of them, more black gangs, and they were more violent. They were more aggressive. I'm just keeping it real with y'all. I'm keeping it real. So, respect to 28th Street, you know, I don't got nothing against them, but they're not the biggest gang, and they're not the oldest gang in Vegas. 
people need to stop trying to distort Vegas history. That's not true. You know, this is not California, like I said, man. This is Las Vegas, man. And Vegas has its own identity. For real. You know, and, and we all know each other. We didn't been to Elko together, Tennessee together. Some went to Spring Mountain, you know, the penitentiary, all that. We all grew up around each other. So we know the truth. And we're sons. You know, a lot of us are sons of, of, of founders, you know, so we know the truth. I don't speak on their politics like that. That ain't got nothing to do with, do with me. But as a Vegas native, what I can say, you know, and being, you know, you know, a former gangbanger, you know, I can say I know what I, I, I know for a fact that 28th Street is not the oldest or biggest gang in Las Vegas. And let's, you know, let's, that's that. Let's move on. And I sit down with any one of them and we can go over this and we can and I'll prove to you that they're not. OK, so. Stop distorting Vegas history, especially if you ain't from Las Vegas. That's why it's all messed up. You know, that's that's crazy, man. Y'all need to y'all need to cut that out. For real. But uh, um, another thing I wanted to talk about, some serious, man. You know, I, I spoke a little bit on about this uh, last time I did a video, and um. I just want to, you know, talk about, you know, uh, mental health and, and when it, it comes to, you know, this game banging, you know, a lot of people need to understand, man. It's a lot of, it's a lot of guys out here, man. And, and, and society, you know, you know, it, it, it seems not to understand that what, what, when you live a, a life like that, game banging, you know, the, the mental, the, the neurological destruction, meaning the mental destruction that it does to you. The mental infliction that it has upon you, you know, can be devastating. And a lot of us, like I say, we don't get help. We we get out it, we get out, and we think that we are okay. We think that we survived the storm because we still here when most of our friends aren't. We think that you know we 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 survive when we lived on, not knowing that we're 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 scarred, we're damaged. Going to you know all those funerals, you know, all that crying. All those emotions that we go through living this life, that hate, that animosity, that frustration. It seems like when you're in this, you know, the only time you're really happy is when you're hurting someone or when you're under the influence or when you're getting over on someone or when you're hearing about someone you consider your enemy having an unfortunate, you know, situation that makes you happy. But any other time you're mad, you're frustrated. You know, that's why we walk around with frowned up like our stomach hurts. And we call it mean mug. And we walk around with our face, with our nose in the air. You know, why we mad? You know, drinking, smoking, doing things that's unnormal. It can have traumatic effects on you. And, you know, it's sad because, you know, it, it's starting to catch up with a lot of us. And a lot of us don't know why we feel the way we feel, like lost, like left behind, because ain't nobody here no more. And you're walking around depressed. You know, you don't want to mess with nobody. You don't want to talk. You don't want to come outside. And you wonder why you feel that way. You just feel tired, but you're too young to feel tired. You 40 something years old, some of y'all 36, some of y'all in your early 50s, but you feel 70 years old. That's because you need help, man. You psychologically scarred. You can't go in and out of institutions, which is called recidivism. You know, you can't be getting into shootouts and, and stuff, getting shot, you know what I mean? And going, you know, going through all that stuff like that and then walk away from it and think you're okay. In the military, they call that post-traumatic stress syndrome. You know, that's just like going and doing tours in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and places like that. When you in them streets, it's the same thing on a lower level. A lot of gang members suffer post-traumatic stress syndrome, man. Bad. And that's a mental illness. That's bad. A lot of us suffer from that. 
And that can lead to other things like bipolarism, schizophrenia, all kind of stuff. I'm just saying that, man, because a lot of us don't get help, man. And we wonder why we can't get along with our, our women. And we wonder why we just can't connect to society. And we wonder why we just can't catch a break. It's because we need we need we need therapy. A lot of us is damaged. And some of y'all, y'all sit there, y'all be quick to say, man, nothing wrong with me. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Ain't nothing. It might be something wrong with you. Yeah, it's something wrong with you. If you ever put on a, a, a rag and went around hunting people, if you if you if you ever really gang bang, there's something wrong with you. Because that's one of the most unnormal things you can do. Because if you really think about it, you had all these gangs out here and all these members. And a lot of times when we was looking for each other to do whatever to each other, nine times out of ten, the people we caught didn't do nothing to us. They just so happened to live over there or be over there. You never think about that. So a lot of people that we do stuff to, they be innocent. They just be from that net, that area. When you, and you say, that's the game. That's the game, huh? What do you mean by that's the game? That's the game. But what did they do to you, though? Think about it. Because a lot of gang banging, it start between two people over a female. And now two neighborhoods is at whoa over a female. Or whatever. But nine times out of ten, a lot of these guys... 99% of these dudes, they ain't done nothing to now one of each other. They just hate each other because these two cats don't get along with each other. Or this cat beat up that cat. Or this cat got the best of that cat in the fight. Or that cat shot that cat. So now these two at woe. But that cat shot that cat over a female. Not because he was this and he was that. He shot him because they was messing with the same female. Am I lying? Am I lying? That's how a lot of that ain't. You know, we live that life, but I want everybody that's from Las Vegas to look around you. Look around you. I don't care what hood you from. If you from Las Vegas, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to look around. I want you to see who here. Who here and who not. How many of the ones my age that know me, my age, that grew up with me, my age, how many of us still around? The generation after me, how many of y'all, that's the wax, how many of y'all is still around? Think about it. All them little young black boys and Hispanic boys, all this carnage we done done, and you think we're not mentally scarred? You think we're not mentally scarred? You think the mothers of the Bangers they had to bury is not mentally scarred. Some mothers buried all their children. They don't have nothing left. They don't even talk no more. They can't stop crying. They can't eat. It's just so sad. Huh? That's crazy, huh? You know? I'm, you know, one time... You know, me and, and and one of my partners used to go over one of our dead friend's house, his, his mom's house. And the reason why we used to do that is because his mom's was so hurt. That was her only son. I ain't gonna even. That was her only son. But he got he got he got he got killed. He got you know. And she was so hurt, and and she was barely hanging on mentally. And the only thing that kept her afloat was that the person that I was with. Her son was real close to him. And every time she seen him, it reminded her of her son. It was like her son was still there when she seen him. So he made sure he went by there as much as he can. Because his mom's, you know, the one that, that, that got killed, she wouldn't talk or nothing. She was like gone. And this was a good woman, a good lady. But she stopped talking. But every time this cat came around her son best friend she she lit up she was happy she talked 
She grabbed his hand. She didn't want him to leave. She cried. She grabbed her son's picture and she just wanted him and her to look at it. And it was so sad. But that's the pain that we causing people's moms and our moms. Because that pain that she feel is the same pain a mom watch when her son is getting sentenced to death row or getting sentenced to the rest of his life in the pen. That pain, that one of loss, it's the same one. We have to recognize that, man. You can never be a bigger so-called gangster above your moms, man. The woman, and we all love our moms. The ones that's fortunate enough to still have that. We, even the ones that don't, we love our moms, don't we? So why do we hurt them like we do? Why? Think about it. Why do we hurt our? Let's have a serious conversation, right? Why? Why we hurt? We love our mom, right? And then most of y'all that call y'all self this and call y'all self that, y'all so quick to say y'all believe in God. Then why we do what we do? It's your choice. You can stop. I did. And I was one of the worst of the worst. I stopped. You know why? Because I don't want to hate. I don't want to hurt no one. I don't want to hurt my moms no more. No more. I don't want to hurt nobody moms no more. I don't want to hurt myself no more. I'm tired of hating. For real. You can call it what you want to call it. I was one of the most ferocious game bangers in Vegas, hands down. Ask anybody. My record speaks for itself. My name and my father's name. My bloodline is legendary. But I stopped because I didn't want hatred. I didn't want my son to live, you know, with hatred in his heart for no one. I don't want moms burying their kids. I want them to live. Because I know what it's like to live the other way. I don't want nobody's child to go through that. I don't want nobody's parents to go through that. I don't care who they are. And if you don't support this, shame on you. Because that means you for the problem. How can we cheer the death of people that's getting knocked down in these streets like dogs? How can we cheer and, and feel good about that? That's somebody's child. Man. That's somebody's child, man. You wouldn't want your moms feeling that way. You see what I'm saying? Y'all so quick to say you love the Lord, especially when you get called for a crime. When you get called for a crime, you memorize the Bible better than the pastors. I love the Lord when I'm looking at a life sentence. I love the Lord. Oh, I love the Lord when I'm looking at a life sentence, though. See, why you don't love the Lord when you out here in these streets? You love the homies. I love you, homie. It ain't about I love the Lord when you out here in these streets, but when you caught up, I love the Lord. Oh, I love the Lord. But when you out here in these streets, you love the homies. Ain't that right, homie? Look, man. You got a job to do. The only way you go right your wrongs is accept that you did wrong. Forgive yourself for doing wrong. And teach your children and people that's willing to listen the consequences of doing wrong. That's how you right your wrongs. By helping people, other people, realize the wrong in their actions when they do wrong. And you teach them from the experience. God lets you learn. It's called indirect knowledge. Something you learn from experience. God allowed you to learn that. And it's for you to teach. That's the only way this problem will go away. That's the only way. We the ones that did this. We got to fix this. You see? You can't call a plumber. To do an electrician's job. You can't call a plumber. To do an electrician's job. You're going to end up in the dark. I'm just saying. 
You got to face reality. You got to man up. And we got to start doing the right things, which is confronting the problem and stop letting and leaving it for other people to clean up and then complaining when it don't go the way it's supposed to go and they do something uh, you've considered a little bit too excessive. Now you mad. Well, if you do your job, they wouldn't have to do your job. See? And our job is to educate these youngsters on the imperils and the destructive nature of gangbanging. Let them know what they really signing up for. Don't lie to them, man. Let them know what really come with this. Not that bull crap glorification. Because being a gangbanger don't make you no man. Being, val being validated by a bunch of dudes with low self-esteem do not make you no man. Not at all. Being able to stand on your own. Being able to make your own choices. Being responsible for your own actions. That makes you a man. Not being worried about what somebody say about you. Having wisdom and knowledge enough and understanding enough to know that the only thing that can define you is your actions. That makes you a man. Listening to what other people say. Letting it make you do things that you know. Like letting people provoke you. Being a crowd thinker, you know, having to think you have to prove your 